Tsar Bomba, the largest nuclear test in world history. The combined force of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings was negligible compared to the Tsar Bomba, the most powerful nuclear weapon ever detonated. The nuclear arms race, which began with the atomic arms race during World War II, culminated on October 30, 1961 with the detonation of the Tsar Bomba, the largest and most powerful nuclear weapon ever created. The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki on 6 and 9 August 1945 put the United States in the seemingly uncontested position of the world's sole possessor of nuclear weapons. But this primacy did not last long. During the war, the Soviet Union made suspended progress on its own nuclear weapons program, and in 1945 Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin ordered the effort intensified. Soviet infiltration of the British and American atomic weapons programs through the activities of spies such as contributed to the efforts of Soviet scientists to develop and build their own weapons. The Tsar Bomba is the Western nickname for the Soviet RDS-220, RDS-220, hydrogen bomb, codenamed Banya. Detonated by the Soviet Union on October 30, 1961, Tsar Bomba is the largest nuclear device ever detonated and the most powerful man-made explosion in history. With a yield of 50 megatons of TNT, Tsar Bomba was the culmination of a series of hydrogen bomb tests carried out by both the Soviet Union and the United States at the time. The Tsar Bomba was also referred to as Kuzkin's mother. This nickname may refer to Nikita Khrushchev's promise at the 1960 UN General Assembly to show the United States Kuzkin mother, which the assembly translated and adopted as we'll show you. There were many other nicknames associated with the Tsar Bomba, such as Big Ivan, Project 7000, and Product Code 202, Product 202. The Central Intelligence Agency designated the nuclear test of the Tsar Bomba as Joe 111. Project. On August 29, 1949, the Soviet Union successfully tested its first atomic weapon, after which both superpowers moved on to develop much more powerful thermonuclear weapons, or hydrogen bombs. The United States came first with the Ivy Mike test on November 1, 1952, but the Soviets were behind again. Soviet scientist Andrei Sakharov, who led the country's thermonuclear weapons research, directed the August 12, 1953 hydrogen bomb explosion at the Semipalatinsk test site in what is now Kazakhstan. The United States and the Soviet Union then conducted a series of other open-air atomic weapons tests. Britain imitated them by conducting open-air atomic weapons tests in the late 1950s, France would follow with tests in Polynesia in the 1960s and later. While the Americans focused on perfecting precise delivery systems for small to medium-sized atomic devices, the Soviets focused on building increasingly large devices of almost unimaginable power. The result was the creation of the Tsar Bomba. A team of physicists led by Yuri Karatin developed the Tsar Bomba. The team also included Andrei Sakharov, Viktor Adamsky, Yuri Babiev, Yuri Smirnov, and Yuri Trutnev. The Tsar Bomba was a three-stage hydrogen bomb with second and third stages designed by Trutnev Babiev. The three-stage hydrogen bomb uses a fission-type atomic bomb as the first stage to compress the thermonuclear second stage. The energy from this explosion is then used to compress the much larger thermonuclear third stage. There is evidence that more than one-third stage was used in the Tsar Bomba. Theoretically, the Tsar Bomba could have had a yield of up to 100 megatons, but this would have resulted in a dangerous level of nuclear fallout, about 25% of all fallout, produced since nuclear weapons were invented in 1945. In addition, the delivery plane would not have had enough time to retreat to a safe distance. Therefore, in order to minimize the nuclear fallout, a lead stripping plant was installed in the third phase instead of fusion of uranium-238. It has been suggested that this method was also used in the second stage. Interfering with uranium-238 fusion greatly enhanced the reaction by splitting the uranium atoms with fast neutrons from the fusion reaction. Since fast fission was eliminated, fusion accounted for only 97% of the bomb's total energy output. Thus, despite its enormous power, the Tsar Bomba did not produce much nuclear fallout. Test. A Soviet long-range 295V bomber, piloted by Major Andriy Dernovsev, delivered the Tsar Bomb during the test. The bomber was accompanied by a 216 observation aircraft, which was responsible for collecting air samples and filming the test. Reflective white paint was used to minimize thermal damage to the aircraft surface. The King Bomb weighed 27 metric tons, or 59,525 pounds. It was 26 feet long and 6.9 feet in diameter. The bomb bay doors and fuselage fuel tanks were removed from the 295B, B, 
because of its large size. The King Bomb was attached to a parachute weighing over 800 kilograms, giving the bomber and observer aircraft extra time to fly about 50 kilometers from ground zero to detonation. Despite the reflective paint and parachute, the chances of survival for those on board were 50 50ths. The test site for this device was Mityushika Bay on Severny Island in the Arctic Circle. Strategic Bomber 295B was designed to deliver this device from an altitude of 10.5 kilometers. The bomb was to be attached to a parachute to slow its descent to detonation at an altitude of 4 kilometers, which gave the bomber and its escort additional time to hide at least 50 kilometers before detonation. Despite this, the crew members were told they had only a 50% chance of survival, they barely survived. The explosion was astronomically powerful, more than 1,570 times more powerful than the two bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The power of the Tsar Bomba was 50 megatons, 10 times more powerful than all the munitions detonated during World War II. The mushroom cloud was 40 kilometers wide at its base and almost 100 kilometers high at its apex. At an altitude of 65 kilometers it penetrated into the stratosphere. Everything within five tens of kilometers of the explosion site evaporated, but the severe destruction spread to a radius of 250 kilometers, enough to completely destroy any modern major city, including the suburbs. Windows in faraway Norway and Finland were shattered to pieces by the force of the blast. By comparison, the B-41, the largest nuclear weapon in the United States, had a theoretical yield of 25 megatons. The largest nuclear device ever detonated by the United States was the Castle Bravo, with a yield of 15 megatons. One eyewitness from the air said, the clouds below the plane, and in the distance, were illuminated by a powerful flash. A sea of light spread under the hatch, and even the clouds began to glow and become transparent. At that moment our plane appeared between two layers of clouds, and a huge bright orange ball appeared in the gap below. The orb was as powerful and bright as Jupiter. Slowly and silently it crept upward, breaking through the thick layer of clouds, it continued to grow. It seemed to pull the whole earth into itself. The sight was fantastic, unreal, supernatural. The fallout could have been catastrophic, not only for the Soviet Union, but also for its neighbors. And so it would have been if the original concept of the Tsar Bomba, an almost inconceivable 100 megaton yield, had been realized. Fortunately, because of the altitude at which the device was detonated, the accompanying 8 kilometers wide fireball was deflected from the surface by its own shock wave and did not come into contact with the ground, which greatly reduced the amount of radioactive fallout. But the results could easily have been quite different. A test of this magnitude could not be concealed, and indeed the now Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev had intended to shock the world with the power of the Tsar Bomba. But condemnation was instantaneous, not only from the United States and its allies, but also from the rest of the world. Up to this point, the United States and the Soviet Union, as well as Great Britain, had conducted hundreds of open war nuclear weapons tests. Andrei Sakharov, horrified not only by the Tsar Bomba, but also by the cumulative effects of all these tests, became a staunch advocate of future restrictions on these tests. Perhaps the only positive result of the world-threatening demonstration flight of the Tsar Bomba was the Partial Test Ban Treaty of August 5, 1963, signed by the United States, the Soviet Union, and Great Britain. Even today, however, the power of the Tsar Bomba, and much more, is within easy reach of every country with nuclear capability. The flash from the Tsar Bomba was seen from over a thousand kilometers away by residents of Norway, Greenland, and Alaska. The nuclear mushroom from the explosion rose to a height of 67 kilometers, seven times higher than Everest, the cloud was visible even 800 kilometers from the explosion. The Tsar Bomba explosion is regarded as one of the cleanest nuclear explosions in the history of testing. Two hours after detonation the experimental field near the epicenter was less than one millirondion per hour and posed little or no danger to the test participants. In addition to the political effect, the Tsar Bomba tests by Soviet scientists proved experimentally for the first time that thermonuclear weapons have no power limits. Researchers only needed to replace the lead cladding with uranium-238 to double the explosive power. After the Tsar Bomba tests, the US no longer increased the power of the charges in its tests. The Tsar Bomba had other consequences. It caused so much apprehension, five times more than any other test before it, that it led to a taboo on atmospheric testing of nuclear weapons in 1963. Von Hippel says that Sakharov was particularly concerned about the amount of radioactive carbon-14 that was released into the atmosphere, an isotope with a particularly long half-life. 
part of it was mitigated by carbon from fossil fuels in the atmosphere. Sakharov worried that a bomb larger than the one tested would not recoil under its own blast wave, like the Tsar Bomba, and cause global radioactive fallout, spreading toxic dirt all over the planet. If you were interested, thank the author by putting a like. And also do not forget to subscribe so as not to miss the outputs of even more interesting videos of my channel. Turn on notifications by clicking on the bell and share this video with your friends. What else interesting can you add to this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read.